Hello guys, it's Victor once again, your favorite YouTube scholarship host. So we're returning to Canada in this video. Several funded generous opportunities in Canada. First, we will begin with um, an undergraduate scholarship. I think two weeks ago we talked about one already at the um, University of um, Toronto. That's the Leicester Person Scholarship at the University of Toronto. Now we'll be looking at a different one at the University of British Columbia, also in Canada. Then after the undergrad scholarship, we'll be going to MSc PhD scholarships. This time I'll be showing you how to dig up fully funded or generously funded opportunities in different Canadian universities. So I'll be showing you the technique. So I've gotten several emails of people sending me on an errand to help them look for either a PhD in cyber security or MSc in animal science or MPhil in literature and arts and things like that. I think it's impossible to do it for everybody. Um, regarding my um, schedule and every other thing I have to do, it's impossible to do it for everybody. But the best thing I can give to you is to empower you with skills on how to look for these opportunities independently. So I'll show you how to dig up a number of opportunities. The application circle is upon us already and I think this is a key skill you need to look for an opportunity that suits you, especially in Canada. And before we proceed, I'm delighted to announce that I'm in a partnership with Grammarly. Grammarly is an editing software that helps you correct your spelling errors, your um, sentence syntax errors, your sentence structure errors, sharpens your language a little bit, especially for professional academic writing. It's free, so look at the the description box of this video to download it for free there's also a premium version where you have to pay so it depends on the size of your pocket check which one you can do either the free version or the premium version so in case you're an international student and english is not like your your um, major language this might be another help even with those who speak english or write english very well there are one or two times where we make these grammatical spelling errors this is also an opportunity to correct those errors using the software or even it's good for anybody whether you're a professor whether you're a student whether you're into business so far you're sending out emails so far you're writing essays i think you need to jump into the ship and then download the grammarly app so open an account today and um, save yourself from embarrassing grammatical errors so let's return to the scholarships that we're talking about today so the first one is at the university of british columbia ubc and as i said it's an undergrad scholarship the last time the last video i did two weeks ago on canada talked about the Leicester Pearson scholarship. So this is a different one and this is at UBC and um, it's called the Karen McKellen International Leader of Tomorrow Award and there are a number of other subsidiary scholarships under it but that's like the major or the first one on the list and uh, when you apply to UBC as an undergrad they kind of um, distribute these um, scholarships you see on the screen among quality applicants, applicants with top um, competitive applications. So in case you're interested in undergrad scholarships, you might want to check this out. It's fully funded by the way. They take care of your tuition, they take care of your living allowance. So you don't need to pay anything. So how do you apply for this or how do you um how do you how do we prepare for this um, scholarship? First, even if you're not looking for an undergrad scholarship, there might be somebody in your family, somebody in your neighborhood, your cousin, your niece, your nephew, your child. Introduce the person to this scholarship, especially bright, competitive students. This is an excellent opportunity to study in a top university in the world. So as I said, it's for international students, graduated from secondary school, and graduated at least two years ago at least or latest latest i mean latest two years ago so willing to come to ubc to study in 2022 you have to demonstrate financial need that you cannot afford this um, education on your own and try to fulfill the admissions requirements of the course you intend to apply for at ubc you could always go here to check the different courses available it's a very big university so will likely find the course that you 
intend to apply for whether in the practical sciences, social sciences or humanities. Then of course things like English language tests and things like that. So how do you go about it? Do you submit an application? You also need to be um, recommended by your secondary school. So your principal has to recommend you and write a recommendation letter for you that this candidate or this student is an excellent student, good grades, good um, participation in extracurricular activities and things like that. So you need to get letters from your from your school. You can also get letters from a local NGO. For instance, you're volunteering in a local NGO. They could also nominate you, write something about you to support your application. You might also require to submit like financial details because this scholarship is for intelligent students but for those who cannot afford to study at UBC, to study in Canada. So you might want to submit, get things ready like um, the bank statement of your parents or your own bank statements and things like that to show financial need. So there is a, the dates here on how to apply. So the entry for this year as expected is closed. We're talking about entry for next year. And there's a timetable here you can follow. The timetable here you can follow. And there's also some contact details here. And um, yeah, that's it for this scholarship. So in case you're interested in undergrad scholarship, fully funded at UBC, take advantage of this. If you're not, please show it to somebody who is. You might have a neighbor, a cousin, a nephew, whoever, a church member, a group member who might be interested in this opportunity. So let's rush to the master's and PhD opportunities. So of course, I'll leave a link to this scholarship below. The so let's rush to digging up MSc and PhD scholarships in Canada. And for this one, we'll be using a familiar technique. This is a technique we know quite well. For those who watch my video on how to find funded opportunities in the US, we'll be using a similar technique to find funded opportunities in Canada. So we are starting from this website. The website is 4icu.org. 4icu.org and here you see the map of the world then we're going to North America you click on North America and then you choose Canada and yes you're on the Canadian page and these are like the major cities in Canada and the numbers in front of the cities are the number of universities in these cities so let's choose Alberta so these are the universities in Alberta. So you could just look around, choose different states, choose different universities, especially if you do not have a particular university in mind. But if you have a particular university in mind, you could just go straight to that university. But this is like a, an overview of what is out there, especially a basic ABC step-by-step -step of how to discover universities in Canada, especially funded opportunities. So let's rush to the University of Alberta and let's say we're looking for MSc or PhD in food science. So here you type, type here MSc food science. And let's see the suggestions. So there is something here already. So we'll click on it and it takes us straight away to the university website. So Faculty of Agriculture live and environmental sciences so this is it here of course you can always go through to read the admissions requirements yourself usually they tell you to bring it um, like a bsc related field they might tell you to bring gre or english test you could always read up this by yourself but in this video we're looking at particularly funded opportunities so look at the different instructions the program structure on your own why may i concentrate on looking for or teaching you how to find a funded opportunity. Um, so these are the subfields in this department. You have um, animal science, food science, human nutrition, plants, biosystems, and co. Then what about funding? If you take a look at the right side of your screen, you see what they call graduate positions. So I want you to pay attention to this. So a number of universities advertise MSc and PhD scholarships or PhD funding in form of job opportunities. Some do that, not all. Here in the University of Alberta, they did that as you can see on your screen. So these 
topics you see here are funded opportunities at the Department of um, Food Science in um, Environmental Sciences. So if I click on this, for instance, if I clicked on this and opened a new tab, you will see what I mean. So these are different funded opportunities. This is one way of finding opportunities in the university. These are topics that already have funding and supervisors are looking for students to apply for them. So let's open one of them. So this one is about identifying food related benefits of hunting and ambivalent hunters. So it's a PhD position and they said the starting date is projected to be I think since September 1st. 2021 and everything you need to know about the project and then um, funding is um 25,000 Canadian dollars as stipend that's a lot of money that is a lot of money that's a lot of money I repeat and of course you see the name of the professor usually or the contact email of who you need to um, meet there there's supposed to be a professor yeah this is it here the name of the supervisor so you're meant to go to his or her page to check what he or she is doing and send the person an email so if this topic catches your interest if you think you have the background the experience to apply for this topic go for it send him or her an email and we've talked about cold mail several times how you introduce yourself introduce your academic background introduce probably and um, the project you've undertaken in the past the skills you have and tell the person why you're interested in this particular topic why you're interested in this particular topic and ask that you wish to apply for an MS or a PhD in this university and to work under his or tutelage and hoping to get a feedback so this is um uh, one of the ways of writing it and of course engage a little bit with the works of this professor probably read one or two of our papers related to this topic and give your recommendation give your feedback give maybe polite critiques and things like that of course attach your cv and if possible your university transcript to the email that you'll be sending to this professor so we've seen this this is one way of finding funding so some universities advertise funding like this. These are particular topics with direct funding. I can check this on your own, but there are still other ways. This is not the only way. So you could go here in one of these tabs and look for finances. How do they um, finance their students? So here there's scholarship and awards. Let's see how students are financed apart from that. Um, that um, those programs we looked at some, um, some minutes ago. So we go to graduate. This is like the finance page of the, of the department. So something is said here that financial support is usually available for thesis based MSc and PhD students through research grants held by prospective supervisors. So let's click on this and get more info on what this is about let's get more info so it is said here as well that there's funding for students usually in form of grants from prospective supervisors what it means is that supervisors are actually the ones giving the grant supervisors have like some kind of research they're doing and they need either msc or phd students or both to come and work for them so it means you need to send your emails to the supervisors apart from those opportunities we saw earlier you could just send to a random supervisor whether he or she advertises a position or not just shoot your shot that's the that's the lesson here and just check they might just be funding and of course they said there's a minimum funding for international students which is twenty five thousand canadian dollars and most of this funding coming in form of research assistantships or teaching assistantships so you'll be working as a research assistant or a teaching assistant for the department and in return they waive your tuition and give you your your monthly stipend so we've seen two ways in this university one is advertised one is not so much advertised you have to contact professors to get um and ask for the availability of you know, GTA positions and things like that. Of course, we talked already of how to contact these professors. But this is one way of doing it. This is one way of doing it. Of course, you can always check the faculty page. 
check their faculty page that's so you know the professors and what they're doing usually you have a website a portion of the website for professors where they say oh this is what we're doing this is um this is what we're doing this is our publication this is this this is that so we could always take advantage of that let's look for let's see if i can find the um, list of professors and what they're doing yeah i think this is it here so you're meant to check them one by one we could use the filter system so there's a filter system here of food and nutrition renewable resources resources and economics human ecology so check which of them best align with your interest and check the professor's profile and see what the professor is doing see the publication then you know how best to contact this professor what to include in your email while contacting the professor so let's move on to a different university to a different technique so this is the university of toronto and this is the political science department so we've now moved from stem to non-stem but now we're more of social sciences um, area so how do you go about this so this is political science department university of toronto so if you look closely you see they talk about funding already on the page they talk about funding already in the page so always keep an eye out for anything of financial support funding PhD MSc opportunities, those are the terms they use to show um, scholarships and um, and um, funding opportunities in different universities. So look out for those terms. Things like funding opportunities, financial support, scholarships, awards, um, MSc PhD positions. So when you get to this website, these are the words you should be looking for. Of course, you also have to read the course requirements, the admissions requirements, because if you don't get admitted, of course, you won't get the, the scholarship in the first place. So here I can already see financial support. So I click on it immediately and see what it says. And here yeah, it says all students in the doctoral program of the Department of Political Science will receive base funding during the first five years of study the PhD program on the condition that they are making good progress towards the degree. So immediately you get into this university, you are assured of some kind of funding. And of course the funding here was specified for domestic students, I think you have like 17,500. For international students, you have over 25,000 Canadian dollars. And of course, most of the scholarships will also come as either as MGTA positions or other kind of resources. So it's often good to still find a professor in this department, send the professor an email. If you're not sure whether the, the scholarship or the funding is given by the professor or distributed centrally by the department, you could always ask. Look for a contact person and say, oh, I'm interested in this course. I'm also interested in funding. Um, should I ask the professor about funding as well? Or is it just them? Should I just try to build a rapport or just try to look for a supervisor? So all those kind of things could be specified in um, an email sent to a contact person in the department, the, the department secretary, for instance, department administrator, the head of department. They help you clarify who to actually contact when it is not clear if you're looking for funding. So it's good you send out these emails on time to clarify and to know how to approach this funding issue so people often talk about sending meals to professors sending notes to professors and some other people will complain that they've sent doses and they've not gotten a reply it might just be that they are barking at the wrong tree so it's better to go through the department look for a contact person there and ask the technique of doing it and most of them are very very gracious at telling you that oh yes you have to contact the professors and they're actually the ones who select who gets funded or no need or yes, contact professors, but at the end of the day, the department determines who gets funding and not the professors. But it's good to have a professor who would support your research when you eventually get in. So that's it, guys. I hope this was useful. And use this technique to look for opportunities yourself. That is the essence of this video. To empower you 
to look for these opportunities yourself. To be honest, I'm tired of getting comments saying, hey Victor, I'm looking for an MSc in food science, I'm looking for a PhD in cybersecurity, can you help me find one, can you send me a link, can you do this, can you do that? My dear, these things are things you could sort out yourself. Get inspired, get to work, get active and then, um, you know, take your destiny by your own hands. It is not rocket science to find or dig up opportunities by yourself. So this is a technique. I think you should use it. And I hope you find something that suits you and a department that is fascinated by your application and that you eventually get the scholarship. We cannot wait to celebrate you. And um, that's it, guys. Thanks for staying with me today and all the things we've looked at. I hope you start implementing them as soon as possible. I hope you start looking at them as soon as possible. And until next time, guys, there are more opportunities coming your way. So if you haven't subscribed, this is a good time to do so. And um, I see you later. Bye-bye.